So listen, you know how I said in my last video that I had no idea where I would take my coffee empire? Yeah? Good, I'm glad. Because I meant it. And then you all went and made that my most watched video ever. Which I mean is amazing, but like, what am I supposed to do now? I mean, it's winter, so nothing grows. The oak tree farm is complete and producing resin. My greenhouse is pumping out beans as fast as it can. And I have a fully functioning coffee shop. What else am I supposed to do? Is exactly what I would have said if I hadn't discovered a land full of untapped potential that provided me with the ultimate opportunity to grow my coffee empire to the next level. Ginger Island. The ideas came rushing into my mind. I was invigorated and provided with a whole new wave of energy to keep on going, to keep grinding, <laughs> to never give up, to build the ultimate over the top, but still cozy coffee empire. So let's break down the plan. Ginger Island must become the coffee growing hub to support my coffee business within Stardew Valley. Ginger Island is here. This is manufacturing. All beans will be grown locally here on the island and then shipped to the farm where the brewing and taste testing will be done to ensure all beans are at max quality. From there, the brew product will be exported directly into the hands of the locals in Pelican Town or indirectly through pop-up shops that will be opened around the valley. So let's get to work. I gathered up my current supply of iridium had enough to plant 15 sprinklers on Ginger Island to massively jumpstart my coffee production. And while those beans grew, I would begin collecting more iridium and building up my keg storage to increase production. Once the beans were planted, it was time to hit the caverns. And I've got to say, this galaxy sword makes the skull caverns pretty easy. After just one day in the caverns, I'd gained 139 iridium ore, 50 coal, and a prismatic shard. Not bad for a day's work. The next few days were spent gathering more golden walnuts, blasting Professor Snail out of a tunnel, and passing Leo's poke test to see if I'm friendly. The walnuts allowed me to further open up Ginger Island for my coffee empire, and finally, with the expansion underway, I felt comfortable giving the locals a glimpse at the upcoming product they would have in the valley. But this leaves me with a big dilemma. What should this coffee company empire cozy thing be called? Let me know in the comments what you think we should call the coffee empire. I took a break the next day to enjoy the ice festival and absolutely dominated Pam and Willie in ice fishing, collecting seven fish, which honestly doesn't feel like a lot, but you know, it was still enough to win. But the next day we were back to work. And after a lot of tedious work, I reached the top of the volcano in Ginger Island and unlocked the forge that I honestly have no idea how to use. And I'm too anxious to mess up my galaxy sword to even try. So please help. I used the iridium I had collected from the caverns trips to craft more sprinklers and plant even more beans across the island. At this rate, I will be producing well over 1,000 coffee beans every two days, leading to an insane amount of coffee being produced. Thankfully, we were making good progress on the kegs as well, and I'll give you an update on that soon. You know, for how amazing this game is, sometimes it just feels like a fever dream. After using a lot of my iridium, I spent another day in the caverns while I waited for more crops to grow and somehow managed to get even luckier than before, bringing home not one, not two, not even three, but four prismatic shards. And then this happened. Gotta stay humble, I guess. Finally, with just a little over a week left in the winter, I was ready to begin building the first expansion to the coffee empire. The first expansion shop would be built directly on the water with spectacular views and relaxing sounds. Who wouldn't want to sip on a nice cup of coffee here? And I honestly didn't know what to expect with this project, but I was pretty happy with it. It felt pretty cozy, didn't feel out of place on the beach, and all in all, just fit right in with the Stardew Valley aesthetic. But when I went to check on it the next day, what? Yeah. Turns out when NBCs walk through fences and some other objects that are placed by the player, they don't change their path, they just destroy it. So on Willie's morning stroll, he also tore down part of my beautiful coffee shop. But that's okay, because it honestly led me to what I think is an even better design that fits the beach even more. Let me know what you all think. With all the changes made to the outdoor shop, I also took some time to mess around with the flooring and wallpaper in the original shop on the farm. And well, this setup is still in a trial phase. There's a good chance it'll get changed again later, but for now, I guess it works. With the month nearing its end, I gave Demetrius his present, which was naturally a triple shot espresso, which he loved. And Marnie gave me eggs. How lovely. By the 27th of the month, all my beans were fully grown and I was producing 
2,733 beans every two days, which if brewed would be about 546 cups of coffee a day, kegs permitting. Which leads me to the kegs. Hello there. Yeah. They were good. We have well over 100 kegs and counting in the shed at this point and can add about three kegs each day with the amount of resin being produced. Needless to say, winter was a success. And if you thought this is where we were gonna end the coffee empire, boy, you were wrong. Because spring and summer allow me to take the coffee empire to the next level. So be sure to come back, stick around and stay tuned. See ya.